Hey guys, welcome back to the Modern Samurai Project podcast, nicknamed the Get Better Podcast. Super stoked to have uh, Tim Heron uh, on the show of Tim Heron Shooting. Um, just real quick, so I've known Tim. Well, how long have I known you, bro? Is it going on four years right now? Three, yeah, four years? Be, yeah, probably three or four years. Now. Fucking A, where does time go? Uh, <laughs> Tim has been an incredible resource if one, if not one of the most important resources uh, on me getting better, especially in my competitive aspect. But just, you know, again, as I always say, shooting is shooting, guys, uh, has been an incredible and available resource to me. And I'm super, super happy to have him on the podcast. Uh, as per my norm, uh, two things. What is this podcast about? It's about the self-reliant lifestyle, right? I make that di uh, distinction because it's not about the two-way lifestyle because there's much more to being self-reliant than just cats, right? It's martial arts, fitness, nutrition, uh, and self-defense all in general, which uh, firearms is a tool within that purview. Um, you guys know that I'm a competitor um, uh, to make me better. Uh, so having Tim on here as someone who has literally made me better is, is, is an honor. So uh, not going to steal your thunder, brother. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, even though nobody cares about resumes around here. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Tim Heron. Um, I'm, uh, I've been shooting since uh, 2010. Um, I'm currently a two division uh, USPSA Grandmaster, um, kind of working on uh, divisions three and four this year. I think just to just to kind of get them out of the way. Um, and my kind of my mo as far as a as a shooter is it necessarily just like obviously I started in competition. I love competition. I love USPSA. I, like for me, that the journey of shooting has honestly kind of just it's it's over overtaken just the the love of competition like it's i look at i look at handgun shooting kind of the same way a lot of people look at martial arts you know it's mm -hmm. it's a lifelong journey uh, of that you're never the best at what you can be at it you know like you're, there's always another level to go to um I, i've i've kind of dipped my toe into the instructor arena for about the past three years or so um made a pretty good solid run at it in 2008 uh, and uh, have now kind of turned my attention to to kind of making that full leap into the uh, instructor arena. Um, I love teaching. I love seeing other guys like have those aha moments, um, you know, where just things come together. They start to see progress under their own terms, you know, and, and me being that guy that just maybe is helps them as the catalyst to to what it takes to get better. To me, that's it's like winning a world championship, you know, to me. I mean, it's, I get that same feeling of, you know, like that, that same feeling of, of just success. Yeah. And, yep. seeing, Satisfaction. and seeing other yep. shooters, right. Seeing other yep. shooters succeed. So, yeah. uh, so the story, you know, when, when you came down here and it was an extreme honor, uh, although probably not worthy of myself to AI for you when you were down here. And um, I often say in my classes, I judge the success of the class, not so much on how many people are in there, but how people get better. And more importantly, what I like to call the O face. Right? <laughs> so when you teach somebody something, right uh and it provides a mechanical advantage and they get better on the spot right and then you just see that oh shit you know what i mean right and uh you know there was one individual that uh you know i've known for a very long time good dude uh critical of many things so impressing him is very hard i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mention his name when he hears this he'll know who i'm talking about but he was just blown away by your <clears throat> by your class and it was just a constant o face you know what i mean it was like yeah. ebenezer scrooge finding the magic of christmas <laughs> <laughs> during that class right and i could see you just you know we i mean it was cold and we were all bundled up man but i could see the goosebumps you know uh, oh, on the yeah. back of your neck up there and and that was and that stoked me man you know yeah. um as instructors hey we're doing it for money but uh 
making people better is really what it's about. And right. if you're an instructor out there and it's not about making people better and you don't give a shit, give it up. Give it up. Anyway, it's my podcast. I can rant if I want to. Not about me. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, um, if, so we're not going to go over your entire background, right? Because you have a, a, a bevy of other podcasts out there, whether it be um, uh, Firearms Nation, uh, ballistic radio, uh, a whole bunch of them out there that that people absolutely need need to go listen to. But the main point I want to take out of there is, is let's go over a couple of things, right? You are a, a grandmaster, right, in both uh, single stack and limited, correct? Yes, and limited. Yes. And uh, the other two divisions you're going for are carry optics. Uh, I'm hoping to do carry optics this year, and I'll probably do production. And, and production, then if, and then if I can fit in, like it's sad to say, if I could fit in limited ten, just because I'm so close already, you know, I, I never shoot that division. That division really doesn't matter for anything. But man, it's just it's another notch on the belt. So, well, again, what's the difference between the equipment difference between single not stack a thing. limited? <laughs> yeah, not a thing. Not a thing. You can you can put your appendix more. You can put your holster more appendix if you want to. But, but other than right. that, what's the, what's what's the difference, right? So right. you have been a grandmaster in USPSA for how long? Uh, I may I achieved grandmaster in early 2014. Okay, and you have been shooting since 2010. From the time you picked up a gun, since yeah. how long? Since 2010, February, February. 10th of 2010. Okay. So one of the things that I always tell people about uh, you in general, your instruction, your advice is you are not that far removed from being a complete know-nothing noob. You're exactly right. right. And the level of progression that you have to the, I mean, to the highest level in the sport. I mean, you were seventh in single stack nationals, right? Yeah. And you're shooting with guys like the great one, Latham, yep. uh, the other great one, Todd Jarrett. Yep. Um, and you got seventh in the entire country. So let people, let's talk about that. That is the 1% mm -hmm. of the 1% of the 1% of the 1% shooting God's gun. Yep. Fathom that since 2010. It was the since first time I picked one up. So one of the things I rem I say about people is like uh, Tim has a um, a great way of relating information to any skill level because he remembers when he sucked. I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember it greatly. So so and without, I never want to you know, forget that. Yeah. So well, some people forget it. Some people I, do forget it. I think you you're know. right. Uh, some people are so far removed. You know, it's like, oh, that dude's been shooting when since he's four. I get it. And he has amazing things, right? But nobody remembers when they were four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, why they sucked when they were prepubescent, uh, you know, prepubescent, right? right? Not knocking those instructors, right? Uh, because that would be stupid. That would mean I'm knocking JJ Ricaza, and that's stupid, right? <laughs> right. But it's a different aspect of it, right? It's, it, it's a different aspect of things. So, at the risk of going too long, can you talk a little bit of more about that on how you incorporate that into your POI? Process, uh, yeah, I, your point of instruction, whatever. So. Right. Um, for me, it's it's. I think that's what makes. I think that's what makes me relatable. Is mm -hmm. that you know I wasn't one of these like these phenoms that picked up a gun you know at any age, and we all we all know four or five of those shooters now that are great instructors. But, you know, they're just like, oh, I picked up a gun. I started practicing for, and in, in six months I made GM. You know, it's like, OK, that's awesome. But I don't think I think they missed out maybe on a little bit of of themselves as far as like that ultimate journey. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I think a lot of those instructors, when they get a student in class, it's just like, OK, how did you overcome that? And, you know, sometimes the teacher is like, well, I just did. Well, what the hell is I just did? You know, like how? And it may be because it was something that they didn't ever spend any amount, like any any amount of time on trying to overcome. Um, you know, I think a lot of those guys too like, might have picked up a gun. They might have been maybe financially in a little bit better situation where they could just they really 
could put in the work at the expense of, you know, time away from a job, or maybe they were, you know, in their early twenties and didn't have two kids that they were raising on their own or, you know, a Mm full-time job and, you know, other obligations as far as just life happens, you know? And for me, I think that's, that's what I'm hoping that's what makes me more relatable to the average person that comes and takes a class is, you know, they've, they've, they're building a foundation or they're learning, you know, this, this, they're stepping into this journey, but they're also, you know, they got to keep a wife happy. They've got to keep a job happy. You know, they maybe don't get to go travel, you know, 37 weekends a year to different matches and and training classes and things. You know, they've got kids at home and things else they got to do, you know, and it's to those people, I say, been there, done that, you know, like I, I did this taking the exact same journey that you're about to embark on, you know, and I'm here to tell you as walking, talking, living proof, it can happen. You know, like if you aspire to be a grandmaster in USPSA, dude, I'm not extraordinary. You know, there, there's nothing I do with a gun that wasn't was one of those things I just picked up and just did it. You know, it took a lot of dedication. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of self-reflection and self-diagnosis to get there. And it took a lot of help. It took mm-hmm. a lot of help from peers and other instructors. And, you know, I mean, just reaching out and not being afraid to take criticism, to take instruction, to take advice, you know, um, from from everybody. You know, and you kind of learn to like, okay, that stuff works and oh, what that guy's saying, yeah, that that doesn't sound all, you know, you have, like you learn to pick out the good stuff from the bad. I mean, mm-hmm. given given enough time and it doesn't take a ton of time for that kind of, you know, to know like when somebody's full of shit or when somebody's steering you the right direction. <laughs> that's a, that's a f- firearms industry, right? We, uh, uh, you know, deciphering oh, yeah. who's full of shit and who's really worth something is is uh, the, is the magic key there. So, so let's talk about that again. You know, there there are many people that were blessed growing up, and at the risk of sounding like you know, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. There's some people that were. You know, there are some people whose whose parents were really into shooting, and they kind of uh, you know helped their kids out or whatever, or they had just they had the 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 um, the optimal situation in oh, absolutely. Situation. And, and God bless him for it, right? God bless him for it. But so how does a guy who wants to get to the top 16 at nationals and just for, for those of you that don't compete, you know, the way they used to have the matches and stuff like that, the top 16 in any division is kind of, uh, you made it, you, right. you made it right. Uh, and I won't get into why that is, you know, just just trust me uh, on that. Um, so if there's a person who happens to be an auto mechanic with kids and a mortgage and responsibilities, how does he ever think that he's going to wind up on the super squad with Rob Latham, who has been the GOAT for decades and decades and decades? What, what, what do you what do you tell that guy when he's ready to like well I'm that's what I want to do but I'm just gonna give up because I don't you know have and that's what- that's just it that, that you got to tell him man I mean there's a level of commitment that you've got to just you have to engross yourself in you know it's it's not just something that you could tiptoe through and be like ah you know I, I, I eventually I aspire to be a grandmaster and you know I practice you know once a month I and mean, I, I pick up the gun and dry fire yeah, maybe once a week or, you know, a couple times a week. And, you know what I mean? And they go to the range and their idea of practice is just like, well, I, I shot a hundred or 200 or even 500 rounds, you know, at a target or, you know, I, I practiced, well, you know, you've, you've got to learn purpose. You know, there has to be a purpose for everything that you do. Um, that's first and foremost, dude, set goals, you know, um, and, and be goal oriented and goal driven. You know, like to and, and write things down. Um, that was one of the big key things I learned from uh, from Mike Seeklander, whom I consider one of my greatest mentors as far as a teacher. Um, you know, Mike was probably, the, you know, one of the most instrumental people in me in getting past a lot of my plateaus and breaking my own barriers. And a lot of it just had to do with the, like learning how to practice. You know, the fact that you're just going to the range and you're just shooting at a target or shooting at multiple targets and just expending rounds downrange for the sake of shooting isn't practice. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get better without some sort of focus, determination, driving goals. So, you know, and, and the thing is, you got to take yourself seriously enough to know. I don't believe there's 
a single birthday grandmaster in them, you know, as far as grandmaster abilities. Mm. Um, I, I think the I think the largest thing to obstacle to overcome is mentally, are you tough enough or mentally prepared to dig your heels in and, and do it? Yeah, a hundred percent. Would you mind sharing that story that one of the legends that I'm just mentioned, what they said to you at nationals, would you mind sharing that story? Oh, no. It's, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm not even going to say his name, but it was, it was, I mean, it was one of these guys that just, obviously I've had dreams and aspirations to ever even just be on the same range with, let alone on the same squad with them. Dude, legend, the legend. I mean, there's, yeah. that is not an understatement. He's a goddamn legend. Yep, yep. I mean, I I, I grew up kind of shooting since 2010. I mean, his YouTube videos were some of the first. I mean, it was like, click on USPSA and boom, there's this guy. And I'm like, okay, I got to be that guy. I, I got to aspire to be that good if I'm going to be that good. And, uh, you know, so day one of Nationals, I, I just shot my own game. I'm, you know, I'm going to do my own thing and just stay focused on me. I'm just going to execute. And I did really, really good. Um so good, in fact, that I didn't even want to look at scores. I didn't want to look at results. I was just like, nope, all I got to do is just keep this same momentum into days two and three. And day two, man, I woke up, went to the range, and I was like, for some reason, I'm shaky now. I'm jittery. Like, I, I just, like, I felt like, crap, I don't, I don't belong here. And about two stages in or so, um, this other guy, you know, kind of walks up to me, and I'm, I'm sitting, and I, I'm kind of frustrated after the second stage. I've just, I'm, I've not been able to pull myself, like, out of the mud, so to speak, you know, just the mud of just like overthinking stages and overanalyzing your own performance and things like that. And I just, I couldn't let go of shit. And, uh, so I'm just kind of sitting there, not really, like, almost feeling like I'm just like banging my head against the picnic table. You know, I'm like, God, I just, you know, like self doubt starts to creep in and you know, a guy come up and he put his arm on a hand on my shoulder and kind of tapped me on the shoulder. And he was like, relax, you belong here. Like you're here, dude. Like, chill out. You know, they're like, you're overthinking stuff. Relax. Like you deserve to be here. You belong here. And I mean, for me, it was just like, what, you know, it mm -hmm. just, and it made me stop and think about like, yeah, you're right. You know, like I, I, I'm right on par with these guys. I'm shooting, you know, the same, same stages. They're, they're doing it, putting up the same kind of performances, give or take a little bit here and there. Uh, you know what? You're absolutely right. And dude, it just set my mind at ease. And I just, I don't want to say I was on cruise control, but like, those nerves were gone the rest of that day, you know, and unfortunately day two, it, 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 it kind of showed, I mean, you could see where the nerves kind of hit me and things happened, And you could also see where I started to just relax based on just, you know, here's one of my all time heroes, you know, just kind of put his arm around me and was like, dude, you belong here. Like stop overthinking this stuff. Just, yep. you know, get out of your own mind. And yeah. It, and, it was and, awesome. And, and, and to clarify for the audience, I go, I know, Many of our gun friends are not into the sports ball, right? But I'm going to make an analogy here, right? This is just not some local hot shot, right? This is, if you're going to make an analogy, this is Michael Jordan coming up to you at the All-Star game going, dude, you belong to be here. This is Magic Johnson. This right. is Tiger Woods. <laughs> exactly. Right? right? Saying. Yep. Dude, you, you got this, right? So no minor feat. Um, and I remember when you you were we were talking on the phone and you were telling me that story, man. I got goosebumps on it. Yeah. yeah I, mean, it just... I mean, I was I was happy for you, but that level of epicness uh, for that person to recognize you and a person you're competing against. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, which is kind of the next segue into your opinion on – that's an amazing example. I try and tell people, you know, uh, again, you know, to reiterate, dude, I, I don't compete for the sake of competing, right? I compete to get better with my gun mm -hmm. for self-defense purposes. I don't get better with my gun for competition purposes, right? right? But the overall mm -hmm. attitude from fellow competitors is absolutely amazing. The only thing I can compare it to is jujitsu, right? Where everybody there, unless they're a douchebag, is there trying to help you and make you better. Absolutely. Right? And you know, that was the cool that was the that was the biggest takeaway for me, like actually getting to shoot with the super squad, you know, and and, and uh, like I still I'm just in awe at the fact that I just I got 
honored enough to to be part of it. You know, I'm like I'm still like in fanboy mode. You know, and here I am. I'm competing right. against you know like. Nils Jonasson and Todd Jarrett and Rob Latham and Mike Seeklander. And you know what I mean? It's just like all these guys are like, holy shit, you know, like what am I doing here? You know, and yeah, like I said, self-doubt kind of creeps in. But to know that like they're not just competitors, you know, like these guys are my friends and peers, you mm -hmm. know, and 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 to see the level, like you're talking about, the level of epicness when, you know, like there was a stage, I think, and I, I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the stages on uh, on day two. Um Again, one of the super squad guys had a gun malfunction that was just one of those, like, I mean, just a magazine didn't want to drop out, you know. And then when it dropped out, it was like, I think the follower kind of went forward. So, like, the round kind of stuck in the gun, too. And he's like, mm. you know, and like everybody, I mean, every single competitor were back there, like, oh no, you know, like yeah. nobody wants to see that, no matter who it is, you know. Yeah. It was just like, man, nobody wants to win or lose a national championship that way. Nobody. You want and to be cool the to guy see. on his best day. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, and dude, he walked off the stage and we were just like, well, you know, shit, that cost you two and a half seconds on that. You're probably down, you know, 15 or 20 match points on it. What of my gear can I give you to to fix that? You know, yeah. I mean, everybody, every single person was just digging through like, dude, do you need extra magazines? Do you want to borrow my backup gun? You know, what was it a gun issue? Was it an ammo issue? What can we do to help? And uh, dude, that's that's freaking awesome i mean it's just oh really dude it's epic it's amazing it's it's yeah. amazing and 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 for the most part that sort of camaraderie and competition goes down to the local club level it absolutely does absolutely right uh because it is a it's a concentration on wanting everybody to get better mm -hmm. right and, and you and, and you can't not unless you're just ignoring it. You can't not not get better when you're competing, right? So before we lose, you know, my self defense minded friends, uh, let's let let's throw in this thing that uh, Tim, where legally responsible, you carry a gun. Correct? Absolutely, I do. Yep, there you go. And do you think you would be as proficient with your uh, EDC firearm? If you didn't compete, uh, no, I would not be as proficient. I, I, I truly believe that. Um, Why? The funny thing is, um, dude. I mean, it just practicing. And I, I honestly, we've had this discussion before. You, mm -hmm. Just you and I personally. You know, like my goals and ambitions as a professional. And I'm not talking about as just a professional competition shooter, but as a professional within the industry, a professional shooter. Um, it's in my best interest to be the best I can be with any firearm I pick up in any level of uh, of execution, whether it be, you know, learning to draw from concealment, whether it's learning to defend myself with the gun, whether it's competing at the, the upper echelon of the sport. You know, and I've, I've kind of switched gears. I was that guy that was the quintessential competition only you know, like, I don't really think that like tactical stuff or defensive minded stuff is really, really anything I want to tackle or be not really necessarily be a part of, but like really focus on. Mm -hmm. And now, because I've seen the, I've seen the growth in like you, I've seen the growth in other shooters that I've been able to help along the way, whether they, and that were probably more so a defensive minded shooter that mm -hmm. it, it's made me really step back and think about it like from the aspect of it's like dude i just want to be better period mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i don't care if it's picking up a double action single action beretta or whether it's drawing a, a an armored block from concealment or whether it's shooting a you know a, a, a high you know a, a competition 1911 for you know for just like i just want to be the best i can be with whatever you put in my hands you know in whatever realm whether it be defensive or or whatnot, you know, now, obviously that being said, I know my lane <laughs> mm -hmm. and I know to stay in my lane, but my lane has, has definitely widened up to where it's not just competition focused. You know, I feel like I can make any level of handgun shooter, a better handgun shooter. Yep. Period. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, uh, you know, when, when that, uh, oh God, what was it? What did somebody say? Anyway, I can't remember. It was awesome though, but it was a conglomeration of hypercritical dynamic situation. 
right? <laughs> nobody asks for your resume when that happens. It's like jujitsu, right? When right. you get into a fight, nobody asks what belt you are. Exactly. Right? So somebody that can uh, stand and deliver a bill drill from concealment in, in sub two, nobody cares about your resume. Right. Certainly the guy on the on the receiving end doesn't care. Yep. You know, and if the methodology in getting to that efficient level of performance, if the path was CAG, awesome. Right. If the path was USPSA, at the end of the day, it's, you know, uh, it shooting matters, is shooting. Right. Shooting is shooting. Yep. So let's talk about something that, um, and I don't know if I got this from you. I probably did, dude. Sometimes it just melds into things, right? But, um, you know, I remember when looking back, and, and I think the first time I heard it was actually jujitsu, right? Um, but I think you beating this into my head uh, has been an epic uh change in me i'm saying epic too much but you know uh an <laughs> epiphany in me talk a little bit about why focusing on the process is the path to success while focusing on the result is the path to ruin uh, absolutely um i think focusing on the result it, it does it it's 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 self-defeating because you're not allowing yourself to like just to step like to step outside yourself and just be the observer of a particular process that you want to accomplish. Um, you know, it, it just it's the same with anything. You know, like whether you're a you know a, a star marathon runner or you know a, a triathlete or a swimmer or you know a basketball player. I mean, if you if you step on the court or you know step onto the the playing field of anything. You know, with just this, like, okay, I have to, I have to win. You know, it, it's not, it's, it's not having the will to win. That's the problem. It's, it's having the expectation before, like putting the cart in front of the horse, mm -hmm. you know, it's having the expectation that something is, I'm going to make something happen instead of being just of the, of the mindset that I'm going to win. And this is how I'm going to win. I'm going to win based on minding my process and my process in the realm of shooting is grip the gun, manage the sights, press the trigger while managing the sights. And that's it. That's our process for every single shot fired. The, mm -hmm. the, the process is never changing. It's, it's the same, you know? So the difference between like achieving success or epically failing at it is I think it just in that mindset of, but if I want to make the gun go off right now, then I'm 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 looking for or I'm mindful of a result and not the process to get that result. Like the result is a byproduct of just mining the uh, mining the process. When I want to match, execute the process confidently and on demand, and that's it. So so for our um, knuckle dragging friends out there, they don't have imagination of what that means, right? And God love you knuckle draggers out there. Uh, let's give them a concrete example, right? And you and I have, I would say of the four years we have known each other, how many times have we talked about El Presidente? A lot. A lot. <laughs> right. Because El Presidente a, is kind of, it's like the deadlift though of the shooting. You know, it's like the is. bench press of. That's a great thing. And for all my shooting. students out there knows I love to deadlift. So anyway, um, you and I rarely talk about part times and now, right? right? We talk about breaking everything down to the minutia mm -hmm. and step to that. For example, right? Uh, the setup, right? Where your toes touch the box, where you put your hands, how you turn, when you turn, what you see, yada, 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 right? right. Um, I think that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the process, not just, hey, bro, you need to dry fire 3.4 L Prez. That's the result. You never get there. And if you get there, you don't know how you got there. It's an accident. Right. But like what we were talking about earlier, like me and Les and me and you were talking about vision, seeing all the targets in your sights going from target to target, the reload, what you're visualizing in the process. Uh, is much more important than the result. If you do the process, 
The uh, results are just there. They're there. They're there. And, and by focusing on the process, you are skipping, you know, the entire uh, beauty of the process. Absolutely. You know? And then you start w trying, rushing, hurrying, worrying about that. And all you care about is getting to the end. Mm -hmm. Right. So, here's, and so like, here's, here's a great way to, 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 to kind of talk about that or to put it in, into, into terms that I think a lot of our listeners will probably understand is let's say uh fast drill, you know, mm -hmm. you're known because you won what, fast coin number 15. Yep. Yep. So all that work you put into fast drill. Okay. And, and achieving that goal, you know, first mm -hmm. of all, you were goal minded, you knew what you wanted to do and you knew roundabout, you, you knew how to find the information to come up with a training plan with purposeful practice to, to, to learn to do exactly what it was you set your mind to do, right? So With the help of friends. Right, with, yes. Exactly. But like you knew the resources yeah. to reach out to and, yes. and, get, and grasp the information that you needed to make that, that goal a, a reality. Yeah. Now, the process of that, of that entire thing, though, it's like for most guys, like I'm sure most listeners here probably have probably tried to shoot or have seen or understand what a fast drill is. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, drawing from concealment, Two rounds into a three by five card at seven yards or ten yards um, into no, a head seven. box. It's seven. seven it's yards, seven. okay. Yeah. Into a three by five at seven yards to slide lock, doing doing a a, a reload, a slide lock reload, and then four more into an eight inch circle, right? And then to to achieve a fast coin, you have to do that in five seconds or less, yep. twice. Yep. Four nine okay, nine okay. technically four nine four, nine or four less. nine nine or less twice. two times in a row, right? Yep. Okay, so let's disregard the two times in a row and let's just look at what the process is to achieve that in, the, let's say, let's say even 10 seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. The process to that is I'm going to grasp my shirt. I'm going to lift cover. I'm going to grasp the gun with strong hand, get a good grip on the gun, draw the gun, meet, marry the hands together, establish my support hand grip, and I'm going to press the gun out and see the sights or superimpose the sights directly where I want them to be based on my vision, right? So, so far, that's our process. The process then is to manage that site and press the trigger. Mm -hmm. Going to apply pressure to the trigger without disrupting that site picture. We're going to just manage the sites. We're going to fire two by, but again, we're going to press the trigger. The gun goes off. We're going to watch the sights return. We're going to press the trigger again. The gun goes off. Now we're at side lock. Now we're reaching for a magazine. We're putting a magazine in the gun. We're dropping the sight on the gun and pressing the gun back out with that reestablished grip. I've now centered the sights on exactly what we want to see for the for the eight round or the eight inch circle, and we're going to fire again. We're going to manage the sights, press through the trigger, manage the sights, press through the trigger, and we're going to do that four times, right? That's mm -hmm. the process of the entire encompassing drill of a fast drill. Yeah. So where do people go wrong? Okay. The, they just the first keep on doing they, the fast drill over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> right. Or yeah. they think like, okay, this is where they immediately go wrong. They look at that target and they go, I'm going to burn this bitch down. Yeah. Immediately, you've taken your mind off the process and you've already focused on a result. Yep. So I'm going to burn this bitch down means now I'm going to, I'm going to race my hands to the gun. I'm going to get a subpar grip. I'm going to disregard support hand grip because all I care about is burning this thing down. I'm going to press the gun out. I'm not going to see the sights at all, if mm. any. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to whack the trigger twice and hope that I put, I'm able to hang two shots in at three by five guard. That's focused on a result or an outcome. Mm -hmm. When I try to make things happen, how many people have like you had in class where they try on a two second build drill instead of just letting it happen, observing a process of establishing a grip on the gun, presenting the gun to the target and pressing through the trigger six times and just watching the dot or what you know, or, or watching the site just lift and recoil and return, lift and recoil and return, and they they succeed. But then the minute they think I can do better than that, okay, yep. Immediately I can do better, or I'm going to burn this down for the next time. Means they've already lost the process. They're already focused on results, and then what happens? They end up with four or five really good shots, and one that's you know that's a hanger in like the low C or a high Bravo even. You know, and they're like, oh, what happened? Well, actually, when they when they, when they go super Ricky Bobby, what winds up happening is that they have the slowest draw they've ever had. And then they're just they've got all the this shit tension. Yep, right? they get all this tension. They yank the trigger, or 
trigger freeze just takes completely over Absolutely. and they wind up shooting five shots. Uh, yep. Yep. Or it's one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, it, exactly. Yep. And it's, yep. and that's, that is let it, that, that is not letting go of results and staying process driven right there in a nutshell. I've just explained to you what process means and what results get you. When yep. you think about results, that's what happens. You get tense, you miss the grip on the draw. You know, how, how often have you had a student be like, oh, shit, I missed the grip on that. Well, why? Why did you miss the grip on that? Most of the time, they can't tell you immediately. Right. They go, oh, I don't know. Well, well, why did you try to shoot with a bad grip? Why didn't you correct that shit and get back on the process? You know? Yeah. And, and, and here's, here's even a successful uh, result from a student I had in this past Georgia. Right? Again, I won't mention his name because, you know, he uh, – so part of my standard is at 25 yards on an A zone from concealment, a 1.5 to an A zone hit in 1.5 seconds at 25 yards, right? So that's one of mm -hmm. my things. So as we're doing that, right, uh, <laughs> the guy, very cool, had a, a zone size steel, right? So I work through people doing it. We get that immediate feedback of the ding and stuff, and, and they go, and then we play king of the hill, right? And mm -hmm. this guy was the first guy who – he was the first guy up there and he was the last guy on there. So uh, they were like, well, okay, so let's, uh, he was like, can I go against you? I'm like, sure, let's do this. Right. So he actually beat me. I have good for no, him. That's awesome. Good for him. I've got no problems with that. You know why I have no problems with that? A, I was cold. Don't care. I did a 151, completely cold. He did a 143. Mm -hmm. So he's super excited, right? That he did blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh my God, that was amazing. Everything just came together. I go, I need you to define that for everybody. Exactly. What came, what came together? Define the process. He goes, I have no idea. I have no idea. It and dude, that hurt thinking. my heart, he man. <laughs> it hurt my heart. And I'm right. like, I'm like, look, dude. So I always tell this jujitsu story, right? Two guys rolling. One guy submits the other. The professor asks the first guy, how did you submit the other guy? And he says, yep. I have no clue. And, I, and the uh, professor goes, you lost. He asked the other guy, how did you get submitted? I didn't shrimp at the proper time. I didn't get the proper frame. I didn't get my leg back to retain the guard. That's how I got submitted. And the professor goes, "Yep, you won. You, you won. won, right? I'm not going to take anything away from the guy, right? But I wanted him to ruminate on the fact that he attained glory, but had no clue how. Right. You know? Yep. So sometimes, dude, anybody can pull <laughs> something out their ass. Well, right? and here's the, here's the <laughs> thing about that, too. So, like, in competition circles, you know, and, and just and kind of tiptoeing back on that a little bit. How often have you yourself gone to a match and you've shot a stage and you come off the stage and all you were focused on was like seeing the dot, pressing the trigger, getting your hits, you know, and, and just executing. And yeah. then you come off the stage and, you know, the RO gives, you know, yells out the time and you've been surprised. Like you're like, holy shit, really? You know, and it's oh, because dude, I do that in my classes. Right. I do that in my classes all the time. Like when I do the like the uh, one shot at seven yards or the bill drill, I uh -huh. start off at 25%, 50%, and 75%. By the way, I've realized a trick. Don't say I'm going to go 100% because that's where I'm focusing on the result and shit goes sideways. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I show people what I'm doing differently between, you know, uh, modulating the presentation and blah, blah, blah. But uh, I, these days, dude, when I say I'm doing 25% on the, like, even like on the one shot, Mm -hmm. and I'm doing 25% speed and it winds up being a 104, I'm like, no shit. Right, and it's simply because, no shit. Right? And it's simply because you're focused on the process. And the process for you as an instructor is, I need to execute this to the best of my ability to present a good demonstration to a student. Yep. Right? So your, whole, your, your entire demeanor is the fact that you're process-driven in not making a mistake. Well, how come all shooters can't do that? They can it's simply changing your mindset. It's, it's simply just changing, changing gears in your, in your brain instead of thinking about like, I'm going to burn this down or I've got to go fast instead of just it, it being, I need to grip the gun, present the gun, press the trigger while managing the sights. That's it. The right. byproduct of the result, the byproduct is the result of that 104 at 25% or that yep. 0.75 at 
95 percent right yep yep and, and what i tell you getting back to the matches in your example I'm, uh i'm gonna say more often than not if i win my division at a match Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely do I win the majority of the stages. But you were consistent. But I was consistent. I was exactly. consistent throughout, you know. And Lord knows, I've lost matches, right? Because I was consistent. And I went like, oh, I really like this stage. I can burn this thing down. Exactly. And then Magic <laughs> Mike pops up. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's because you took your mind off of process. Right. You started focusing on a result. Yep. You know, and like I said, whether that's a one shot drill, a six round build drill, a fast drill, an entire USPSA stage, an entire USPSA match, your mindset in a practice session. It doesn't have to be just a single drill. It's just how it's it's shifting gears in your mind to think about I'm going to learn from this experience and the results will prosper from the process. That's it. Yep. Yep. So let's get back to more uh, self-defense-minded things and the and the uh, crossovers between competition, what you shoot in competition, and what you carry every day. Uh, and it's cool to, I mean, you put it on Facebook and the gram of what you carry every day. So I don't think it's a personal violation. If it is, let me know. We'll just edit this bad boy out. No, that's but so you so you compete with a Atlas custom, 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 custom. Yep. 1911, single stack 1911. Built, 1911 built directly to my specs, exactly what I wanted. So beautiful gun. Yep. Beautiful gun. You also load your own ammunition, right? So, in, in all fairness, you are sponsored by Atlas, right? Uh, sponsored by Atlas. I'm also and sponsored by Federal Premium Ammunition. Correct. Absolutely. Right. And you, you load all your own ammo. Yep. Right. I, I, I use all their components and load it to my specs. So we're going to talk about the transition to what you carry every day, which is a uh, CZ P10C, correct? I, I have a CZ P10C, or <laughs> I, uh -huh. I, I don't, I don't even, I'd love to admit um, a J frame, a Smith and Wesson model uh, MMP 340 J frame. You, yeah, absolutely, dude. This thing. Talk I love about it. practicing uh, for the internet. <laughs> For the internet, it's Claire. It's Claire. It's Claire. All right, you fucking Nazis. Anyway, um, amazing trigger control practice. Absolutely, amazing trigger control practice. So, okay, so back on back on point, and you load your own ammo, and according to some of our friends, it's not <laughs> real man ammo. <laughs> For competition, yes. For 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 major power factor and single stack, like it's I'm not that far under what box stock forty five ammunition is. When I mean I load my own ammo, I have I still have to achieve a power factor, and that yep. power factor for me um, is one sixty five is pretty low, and that's that's the floor for yeah. major. Nobody shoots one sixty five power factor. Yeah, because you give up accuracy, you give up velocity, you give Correct. up all that shit. So anyway, Correct. I just want to say that for our. But Our yeah. internet friends out there, the <laughs> competition guys and their powder puff loads. Yeah, I don't shoot powder Whatever. puff loads. I yeah. shoot just about. I mean, it's it's just a tick under what, uh, you know, 800, 820 feet per second, you know, 45 ACP factory ammo is. You know, my stuff's going across the chrono at about 780. You know, something like 175, 176 power factor. I mean, like I said, it's... It's pretty stout, it, but it has to be able to cycle the gun, and I want the stuff as reliable as possible. So when, you know, the advantage of me loading my own ammo for competition only, mind you, is I want to be able to achieve the level of accuracy, you know, or, or to maximize the level of accuracy out of an already accurate platform in the gun. You know, and you can't do that just shooting subpar, you know, kind of box stock ammo. And not that federal premium ammunition is box is subpar. What I'm saying is there are a lot of brands out there that are, and you're not maximizing the ammunition to the gun, right? You know, versus 100%. versus a, a a great hand loaded round. So, but so like when the, you when, when you practice with your carry gun, though, uh -huh. right? It's a it's an absolute travesty, right? You're an absolute scrub because you shoot these gamer guns. <laughs> and, so no. Not I'm yeah, so let's no, let's talk about your practice with your carry gun, right? Because I'm okay. assuming that you practice with your carry gun. Uh, 
What's it, it, I mean, is there a transition? Is truly shooting shooting? Uh, truly, what do you do when you practice with your carry gun? And why do you? Why do you uh, practice with it? I, I practice on it because I want to be just as proficient with it as I am with with my uh, with my competition gun. So you know, I as I probably don't dry fire as much. Um, you know, obviously because a competition is kind of like, like yeah. Winning matches is kind of what sets me apart and, and kind of helps build my business as a as an instructor, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that obviously takes precedence over anything else. But as far as like my everyday carry, like I still strap on, you know, the uh, the appendix holster and I, I, I do at least a 15 to 20 minute uh, dry fire session three times a week or so with my, uh, my everyday carry gun. You know, I want to know what, what it's like to index my strong hand to the gun. I want to know what it's like to, to have to clear a cover garment. I want to know what it's like to draw that gun and establish a good support hand grip and see the sights at the exact same, you know, times or try to match the same times that I do with my competition rig. Um, as far as manipulating the gun, dude, you know, uh, to me, I, I've kind of gotten beyond just the nuances of like, Oh, a super fine competition trigger and an everyday carry trigger. You know, like to me, it's grip the hell out of the gun and press the trigger while managing the sights. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, I don't care if I'm pulling a, an eight pound trigger or if I'm pulling a one and three quarter pound competition trigger. It's it, the same, <laughs> you know, the, the, the same fundamentals a mastery of those fundamentals applies. You can't, you can't cheat one or the other. So... Yep. Yep. You know, and, and it's, but I, I do a lot of the same kind of drills, you know, so like multiple target transitions with the, with my everyday carry gun. I want to be able to know that I'm still leading the sights with my eyes. I'm, I'm seeing things before just presenting the gun to them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then I'm focused on that same process too, even in dry fire, you know, I'm focused on managing the sights. And I know a lot of guys talk about like, ah, trigger control. Trigger control to me is secondary to site management. You know, like if I, if I'm gripping the gun well enough that I can press the trigger with any, basically with any level of fluidity or aggressiveness as possible and just keeping the sights managed, the sight picture the same, you know, managing that sight picture is much more important because, you know, the, the type of trigger pull you have is always going to differ depending on target presentation, difficulty of the shot, distance, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, like my, like I said, and that's, again, that's, that's overcoming that thinking about a result and just minding the process, just observing. And for me, it's right. So, it's, so interesting, interesting enough, you were uh, on a show recently that I was just on, right. And I won't give away the details because it hasn't aired yet. And that person had asked me about your concept of managing the sites being more important than anything else. Um, so okay, let's talk about that a little bit. So my view on this, right? Like what I teach in my classes, right? So mm -hmm. on, on the draw, right? So the uh, removal of cover is the master grip, is the Mary, is the presentation, is the prep, is the aiming, is the shot. It's all one thing. Right. right? Uh, w would you agree with that? I mean, uh, in, in that like the managing of the sites is not more important ergo divorced of trigger press grip mary presentation it's all the same thing right it's all encompassing but i think a lot of times people get so hung up on the the minutia mm -hmm. that they they forget what the overall picture is the overall mm -hmm. picture is dude i can have the best trigger control in the world but if I'm not managing the sight picture that I want to have on it, that shot's still going to be errant, mm -hmm. right? And when I really want to start picking up the trigger faster or I want to shoot faster or I want to, you know, like repetitious shots, you know, sooner, not faster, but sooner, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to be able to have a level of grip on the gun to manage the sight picture better so that when I start aggressively pressing the trigger harder and harder and faster and faster until I'm basically slapping that thing like th the ultimate goal is to still keep the sights managed to the level that you're watching the sights lift and recoil but you're not seeing the sights move or, or or deter themselves from what you had originally had them pointed at or aimed at 
So I think so many people get hung up on like, okay, now I'm pressing the trigger and there's the wall of the trigger and now I've got to add some more pressure and make the gun go bang right now. They're focused on that one tiny little bit of minutia on the overall process and then they become results driven. They become results, you know, result focused on making mm -hmm. the gun go off right now. And mm -hmm. what do you think happens when they make the gun go off right now? They end up jerking yeah. and right. they're not managing the sights. If I just That's anticipation, just, bro. They're afraid of the bang. Right. But if, if I just tell somebody, just manage the sights, manage yeah. the sights and apply pressure to the trigger however you want, but your only goal is to keep the sights in the same spot throughout the entire process, what do you think happens? They generally succeed immediately. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. hundred percent. So, so why would a person who maybe they don't have access to competition, uh, they are self-defense minded, why should they take your class? Um, to get better. I mean, period. You know, it's like I said, <laughs> now, the, 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 uh, the class itself is a little more competition centric, you know, uh, it's somewhat a little more, it is very competition centric, you know, like I, I start students, you know, on day one with let's shoot a 28 to 32 round field course. But for me as a, as an instructor, it gives me an opportunity to analyze the student, everything, their muzzle awareness, what their their trigger finger is doing, you know, as far as like just their gun handling and gun safety awareness. So it really doesn't it isn't so much about competition level types of stuff as mm -hmm. much as is are they are they good safe gun handlers? Do they have any absolutely glaring problems or just you know or deficiencies in how they handle themselves with a firearm, whether it's moving and shooting, whether it's you know, shooting multiple targets, whether it's seeing what, you know, whether they're overlooking the sights and just watching holes appear on targets or whether they're actually seeing, you know, a, a semblance of a sight picture. How are they, you know, how are they doing the reloads? It, it gives me an opportunity to, to kind of notate glaring deficiencies in their game. Yeah. You know, and like I said, and I've got guys that are wholeheartedly, you know, just competition level only shooters. And I've got other guys that, you know, they kind of dabble in competition, but their primary focus is defensive shooting and the class works or it, it, it's all encompassing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I will give my full testimony on that because I ran TD2 from concealment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And uh, all the feedback you gave me uh, had nothing to do with my concealment draw or my reload from concealment. N nothing. <laughs> right because right? contrary to proper uh, popular belief out there uh the draw unless it's for like a classifier or something like that in competition the draw has really little to do with anything right you know uh the reload more the reload mm -hmm. more but if you're moving and reloading at the same time it gets absorbed in the same in, in, in another activity so i just kind of want guys out there to, to, to realize that, you know, the core competencies of shooting is shooting. Um, and again, I have learned so much just from talking to Tim, uh, that the, the, the hands on thing, um, was another, was another level, right. Phrasing. I don't know, but, uh, uh, but you know, uh, and, and, John Correa said this about me, that a good coach can diagnose you over a video over the phone, right? And you have done that for me for years, and I, and I, and I appreciate that. Um, now, you are also offering virtual lessons as well. I, I do. Um, it's right. it's kind of like, I know you've been doing it for a while, and it's something mm -hmm. I've, I've just started to kind of, you know, to kind of put myself out there and do um, uh, for me. And it's, it's not just like finding my own niche. But uh, at the same time, you know, a lot of it has to do more with like dry fire, um, you know, deficiencies in, in a yeah. shooter's dry fire game, um, things like that. But yeah, I've, I've been doing that. I'm, I'm actually working with a couple of students uh, currently. And uh, it's kind of a learning game for both them as well as, as, as me, um, you know, and giving them, and you and I've kind of talked about this. And in fact, mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of built a little bit of a training regimen for you to kind of get past mm -hmm. your next your next plateau. So for yep. me, that, that's the, the online training thing is not just a virtual thing. It's, it's getting, you know, an hour or a couple hours of my time, you know, over a couple of months, you know, just face to face, kind of like we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also following it up with, uh, 
I want to see some match videos. I want to see some just videos of your practice, whether it's in dry fire or live fire, both. You know, I want to see what it is you're doing and what it is you might not be doing. And then obviously building a, a training program, just like a, a you know, a, an exercise personal trainer would do or a, a nutritionist would do, you know, yeah. like I need, I need the feedback so that I can give you a, a plan. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. And I want everybody to notice the enthusiasm that Tim has talking about helping people because that's really the thing. I mean, we can all gain benefit for somebody doing a monetary exchange, but if you're the person you are seeking help and it doesn't matter if it's a martial art, if it's shooting, if it's fitness, man, if that person isn't fired up about you getting better, there's better choices out there. There's better choices out there. Um, all right, dude, so we're about 56 minutes in here. So we're going to get to the final segment of this okay. ever so epic interview, right? And we're going to get the get it off your chest section, <laughs> segment of the program, right? And to reiterate for our new listeners what this is, uh, if people stopped doing something or started doing something, how would they get better? Not limited to just people getting better, but... You know, if the industry, you know, uh, whether that be, you know, the overall firearms industry, manufacturers, uh, competent competitors, you know, self-defense guys, uh, it applies to all of them. Nobody cares about your neighbors playing music late at night, right? We don't care about that, right? But right. what is it that you would like to get off your chest? And it doesn't have to be a single thing, man. The floor got, is I, yours. <laughs> I've got a couple. Okay, um, awesome. So for me, firstly... Stop. Stop with the fucking polarization of the industry itself. As mm. far as shooters. So what I mean by that is defensive minded or tactical minded shooters versus competition shooters. You know, and this comes from <laughs> from a personal experience of being absolutely freaking crucified by uh by by some of the the Camden, Tennessee clan. Of, uh, of followers of a certain instructor mm. um, who I will keep rem- uh, nameless at this point in time. That, oh, you know, that think- knows you're talking yeah. about. You said Camden, Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that thinks that mindset trumps anything and everything else. And I think, you know, like that, that is allowing your ego to get in the way of getting better with a firearm. Like I think skill is absolutely just important as mindset. I like can't have one without the other, you know, you can't be overly skilled and not have the mindset and succeed, whether it be in a gunfight or a defensive situation or in competition, just like you can't just have a mindset and hundred percent succeed in those same, you know, in that same realm. So stop with the polarization defensive guys. You probably could learn 50,000 things from the competition level shooter, a competition sided shooter. Competition guys, you could learn 80,000 things from a defensive minded or, or a tactical minded shooter Absolutely. about about everything from mindset to what it's like to be, it's weird to say, tribe minded. You know, I think some of my absolute closest and best friends in this community of shooters, of, of gun enthusiasts, of journeymen or martial artists have all honestly more so stemmed from the defensive side of things than they have. Like I've always been the outlier competition guy that has gotten along with or, yeah. or, yeah. you know, gotten along with the, the tactical minded people. And I've really had to fight my way in to be, to, to, to kind of prove relevancy there. And I know without a doubt that a lot of tactical or defensive minded guys have got to fight that same battle in the competition like let's stop let's stop with that shit like at the end of the day we're all enthusiasts and we all want to get better at that's why shooting is shooting Mm -hmm. so that gets on my nerves and that's something that needs to stop you want to get better get better looking all encompassing not just in your one lane like i've learned more from (laughs) i've learned a lot from my defensive minded guys over the last two years, which is, like I said, has completely changed my mindset over just competition rules and defensive guys don't, you know, like, no, that, mm-hmm. and, 
I, I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more, man. You know, I was talking to uh, Les and I were talking about it, right? Uh, because, you know, we all kind of walk that, uh, as John Dufresne says, the unicorn path, right? Of being in between the two worlds, right? And mm-hmm. I think the, one of the lessons is, is that, you know, uh, my tactically minded friends, right? You, t- you all take everything way too fucking serious. Way too I- fucking serious, right? And my gamer friends, you don't take anything fucking serious. <laughs> which you know? is which is a good thing and a bad thing sure you know? sure i mean there's a there's there's a middle thing you know as as my uh you know self-defense tactically minded friends can come off and saying oh that guy you know gamer fag blah 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 it's like but dude you can't shoot faster than a 40 fucking split shut up right right, right. On the other hand, my my gamer friends is like, oh, look at that guy. He can't do more than a 40 split, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, let's see how fast you can shoot after I punch you in the face. (laughs) Right. 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 Because I have seen guys. I have seen guys uh, leave a match. You know, they put their 2011 in, you know, in their bag or whatever. And we go out and get lunch and God bless them. They're carrying. Right. But then they're taking some fucking Derringer and putting it in their pocket. It's like, dude, dude. Right. <laughs> what are you right. doing? God bless you for doing it, but dude, but dude right. come on. You know? Uh, so, yeah, a- absolutely, man. We can all learn. And, and there's amazing examples. You, you, yourself, you know, on a national level guy, Mike Pannone, mm-hmm. uh, Mike Seeklander. You know, people forget J.J. Ricasa was an air marshal. You know, yeah. stood up that part of that program. He was uh, a lead instructor like for that. the Department of Homeland Security for right. years out in Jersey, too. I yeah. mean, the dude, the, I, the dude's absolutely. no slouch in any realm of the of shooting world. You know, did I already mention Mike Pannone? If I didn't, I'm going to say it again. Mike Pannone. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you absolutely. Know, there's so much, so much um, amazing stuff to be learned on both sides of things. So, okay. So, so, so that was number one. That was awesome. number one. Number, one. What's number, number two. two? And man, I, this this might sound a little pompous or or, or crass of me, especially being a newer instructor. Um, I, you know, a, a you podcast know, to podcast. I'm, <laughs> I'm a you know I'm I'm a baby at this, but it pisses me off to no end when instructors will talk about not demoing. You know, oh. and be, you know, like oh yeah, you don't want to demo because I don't want to show off for a student. And it's like if you're demoing to show off for a student, you're doing it wrong. And if you're not demoing for fear of, I don't know, influencing the student in some other way, then I, you're doing it wrong. You know, and so you know, a lot of guys, or they'll or they'll demo something and they demo it just directly into the dirt and the burr because they're afraid of. Then maybe they don't demo because of ego. Maybe they don't demo because of fear. Either way, though, if you're not, if you're an instructor, a competent instructor of any level, I don't care whether we're talking about CCW, if we're talking about basic fundamentals of marksmanship, if you can't demonstrate, how the hell do you plan to convey a, a, a level of, uh, you know, a, a level of knowledge to your student? <laughs> Validity. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, and, and it doesn't mean I need to demonstrate something at the highest level, but you need to be able to demonstrate it proficiently. That's it. You know, but th- th- these instructors that talk about like, oh, God, you know, yeah, I taught a I taught a class of 25 to 30 people in it. And, you know, I don't demo anything. Well, dude, you're doing your students a complete and terrible disservice. And you're and you're and, and you're taking away 50 percent of the learning process. Exactly. Right. We, we have all had people who have broken our glass ceilings. They didn't do it by talking and they did it by showing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're doing it, if you're not demoing because you fear failing in front of the students, then you're doing it wrong. You know what? I, f- I fail in front of students, you know, but there's reasons I do it. In fact, I did it at the, the Virginia class, you know, but I wanted to prove that, like, I'm not afraid to get up and demo and but they, those those failed demonstrations are also such a great catalyst for teachable moments. A hundred percent. And a hundred percent. And that's exactly what you did. And I appreciated that. And it was a little trigger freeze in there. Yeah, those a little, little trigger, trigger freeze. freeze. Yeah, little little tension. But being able to know that you know that I'm not just full of shit. 
you know, when I teach somebody how to self-diagnose themselves, it's self-diagnosing failures so that they can turn those failures into successes. Yeah. If I can't even demonstrate that level to, to myself or, you know, in front of students, then how the hell do I expect my students to get what the hell I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, I will tell you that I have been, um, look, dudes, I'm coming out to teach a class, right? Yes, I, I'm making money and stuff like that, but I enjoy shooting, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and lately I have, I've been told not to show off in a class. You know what? You know what the great thing about having your own classes? You can do what the fuck you want to do. You know what I mean? So I show people at 25% and 50% and then 75%. I let everybody go through. And you know what? I have more fun because I go, hey, guys, you want to see what I can do if I push it a little bit? And inevitably, they say yes. Inevitably, they say yes. Because you know what? I like to shoot. I'm not doing it to show off. It's just that teaching for two days and not shooting is fucking boring. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that, 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 that's me, right? And getting back to is that a benefit or a detriment to the student? Um, I can see both arguments for it. But I will tell you the first time I ever, uh, when I was playing a lot of pickup ball in basketball in college, and that's why I have bad knees, right? The first time, I, I mean, it, I could dunk a ball, you know, without even think about thinking about it, but I could never do it in a game until I got into a game where the other nine guys dunked as easy as they could breathe. And when I got the fast break, guess what I did in the game? I dunked. Yeah. Part of it is just showing people what is possible. Right. You know, uh, I will tell you in your stage runs, the thing I remember the most was your reload. So you got this skinny little anemic fucking magazine <laughs> and this skinny little anemic fucking magwall, dude. And that thing literally, uh, you tapped the magazine and it teleported into your gun. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went, because splits, dude, splits don't impress me. Right. Footwork impresses me. But we talked about this. What impresses me is moving reloads without thinking about it. And that reload was fucking magical. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can't even, you know, and I see a lot of shooters, dude. Mm -hmm. And that thing just went whoop. And you are off. And I was just like, that is gorgeous. But it broke my glass ceiling, right? right? So if you're just demoing to a level of proficiency and not showing people the levels of what is uh, achievable, I think maybe you do them a disservice. Right, I think, well, no, you do I a think disservice. what I mean when I'm mean demoing you, to a level mean, of proficiency, right? Yeah. What I mean by demoing to your level of proficiency is demoing to your level of proficiency. Yeah. You know, it, it's not about just like, well, let me do this very, very slow. Yes, I, I agree. Demonstrating slowly to show technique or a certain mm -hmm. skill, right? But demoing to your level of proficiency, and if that means my level of proficiency is. Uh, you know, a 0.69 draw to an A zone hit at a seven yard target. That's my level of proficiency. Guess what? It's probably going to happen. But at the same time, don't as an instructor, like a, a, my kind of my word of wisdom to anybody that might be listening and including you is don't get wrapped around the axle. If a student does beat you or succeed oh, yeah, or it's better, what we're supposed to be like, doing. that's exactly right. <laughs> I want every student in my class from the unclassified brand new shooter to, you know, I've, I've taught like top 10, top 16 grandmaster level shooters, dude, I want you to beat me. Like my, my ultimate goal is to instill upon you the skills and techniques to make you as successful or hopefully more successful than I am, yep. you know? And that's, that's what makes me passionate about it is yep. just seeing people get it. Yep. A hundred percent, man. A a a abs a absolutely. Absolutely. Those are some great get it off your chest, my friend. I dig it. I dig Thank it. You. I do Thank dig you. it, man. So cool. All right. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Tim, how, how can they, how can they find you? What's your website, IG, all these wonderful things so people can uh, bask in the glory of your <laughs> so my website. <laughs> so my website is uh, timheronshooting.com, um, and it's it's kind of it's kind of newfold, but uh, it's got everything. It, it 
explains everything about my my classes that I offer, um, class curriculum for my my kind of my flagship two day class. Um, it's got my class schedule and how to contact me and all kinds of stuff in it. I mean, it's got a lot of good information. Um, uh, Tim Heron Shooting is also my Instagram uh, handle. Um, I, always looking to kind of increase the following there and, and kind of spread the, spread the gospel of shooting and, 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 and all things shooting, uh, also you know, food and bourbon and cigars and you never know what you're going to find there. It's all kinds of good stuff. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm, I'm very active on, uh, on social media as far as Facebook. I've got a couple of pages I manage there, uh, Tim Heron and then also a Tim Heron shooting Facebook page, as well as also have a YouTube channel and it's, Lo and behold, again, surprise, surprise, it's Tim Heron shooting. Mm. So, and Great uh, information. On the, lots, lots of free lots, milk on, on all that. So, yep. So, you can reach out to just about any single one of those social media outlets and, uh, and get a hold of me. I, I try to make myself as available as possible to anybody and everybody. So, yeah, don't, don't think that you're just going to get lost in the shuffle. Um, you know, reach out to me, man. I, I love to, I love to talk shooting. I like to help. So, a hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. Um, yep. So, uh, thanks for being on the show, Tim. Uh, I, I cannot stress to people, um, open your horizons, man, get out there. Uh, even if you're a defensive minded shooter, man, go compete, push those boundaries. If you are just a competitive shooter and you really dig Tim and you have no interest in defensive shooting, why that's dumb. <laughs> right get out there compete push your boundaries take this stuff as seriously as you need to but then again have fun have right? fun with it Absolutely. have fun with it as well um man good stuff uh so uh getting back to those things that pay the bills guys if you dug this episode if you like my other episodes please do me a favor at least on the youtubes uh, subscribe, like, uh, and share it. Uh, you can find me on modernsamuraiproject.com. Hit the classes button if you'd like to take a class with me. Uh, I am getting now booked through, I think, going into October. Super blessed uh, in, in that aspect. I also do virtual privates as well, you know, dry fire. Let me answer that question, right? It's dry fire. Kind of hard to track that shit in live fire with angles and stuff, right? <laughs> right? All I need is you putting your thing at a three quarter in front of you and something bad going ha and happening, right? But we can get a lot of good done work in dry fire. Um, if you're a host looking to uh, host me, ten students is my minimum. If you got a range that can have uh, at least ten targets, a couple pieces of steel, we can have a good time. Love to get you out there. Uh, for those police departments, I have developed and going to be implementing my red dot pistol instructor course uh that's a two-day course would love to talk to you about that uh find me everywhere just put in modern samurai project instagram google facebook yada 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 uh sorry for the long commercial but what's always the most important be good stay safe get training <laughs>